topic to, I guess, simply define. But if I were to make the attempt, uh, I would say something along the lines of, you know, informing a computer about a particular topic and then applying that knowledge to a new problem. Um, you know, a lot of the times we're just building models and then we're attempting to apply those models to new problems. And there's a whole set of techniques that we attempt to utilize in order to properly build that model uh, and make it as robust as possible. Um, but in a very simple sense, we're basically just teaching a computer about something and then we're hoping that the computer will be able to give us answers based off the knowledge that we provided it. Uh, so a little bit about my background and some of my professional experience. Uh, so some of you may be, may be surprised to learn that I was actually a philosophy major in an undergrad. Uh, my core focus was in epistemology and logic. Um, and I took some computer classes, as, computer science classes as well. Uh, but my major from UC San Diego is in philosophy. Um, I worked in consulting uh, after I graduated. I also started my own. I had a startup company uh, with a, a partner of mine. Um, and then uh, after that, I decided to take some more computer science classes. Um, and then eventually I ended up here at Oracle uh, working in the cloud computing and um, machine learning department. Uh, and if, you know, if anybody wants to learn more about my professional background and you know, maybe some of my, my previous work, I recommend everybody ch to check my, my LinkedIn profile, which, you know, has more information about my, my background. With respect to where I am right now at Oracle, I would say that it's, it's definitely a game changer. Um, I think one of the biggest changes that we've seen here is with the autonomous data warehouse at Oracle. Uh, so a lot of the times there are DBAs, database administrators that are hired to oversee, um, data warehouses. And, you know, it's, it's a very taxing, uh, job in the sense of patching and security updates and, you know, uh, managing the data and, you know, query, ten, uh, latency issues, um, and, and with, you know, all these different aspects when it comes to, to data warehouse and information technology. And with the autonomous data warehouse, this has substantially um, impacted the, the data warehouse market, um, where a lot of that patching, security, scalability um, is now being automated, uh, utilizing machine learning and artificial intelligence. So um, I would definitely say that machine learning has substantially impacted the IT sector and will continue to impact the IT sector moving forward. Uh, the better question would almost be what sectors aren't using machine learning because <laughs> I feel uh, at least in my role here we have a variety of clients and I've worked on projects from almost every industry um, so there really isn't a sector that I that I would say uh, isn't uh, in some shape or form going to utilize machine learning um, but I would say there are some sectors that are more lucrative than others, um, such as the finance sector, um, you know, and maybe transportation, uh, and maybe a few others where, you know, we're seeing self-driving vehicles and we're seeing, you know, uh, people attempting to make predictions about the stock market. So those are, are probably the more lucrative uh, machine learning uh, sectors, but um, in every possible way, every sector is being impacted. Uh, by machine learning and, and the data that's being collected is becoming more and more valuable. I, I can't really reveal any of the clients that I, I work with or anything here, but um, one kind of innovation project that we had here um, was uh, there is a public data set Chicago crime data. This was just something fun that we were all playing with internally. And uh, we wanted to slice and dice our, you know, I think it was, I don't know how many gigabytes it was. I think it was maybe 10 gigabytes or so of, of Chicago crime data to make some predictions about future crime um, and to kind of just study um, 
uh, crime patterns. So uh, as a result of our weeks and weeks of slicing and dicing the data set, we learned uh, not to have lunch near Grant Park on Thursdays between 11 and 2 p.m. So that, that was one uh, insight that we generated. And, uh, you know, we implemented some, some predictive analytics too and uh, tried to, to build some models and, and uh, implement some linear regressions. But yeah, that was really interesting and it was fun because it had, it, you know, potentially if we were to demo that for the police department, um, you know, it would really, I think, uh, uh, influence the way that they would allocate their police officers, right? One, one really interesting um, debate, internal debate that we had about our presentation, or at least our, our innovative demo was, you know, we thought more about whether or not the list of crimes, what we were thinking about whether or not it was a list of crimes or was it a heat map of where police officers were stationed. Basically, we were trying to figure out whether or not the data set that we have is biased and whether or not any, um, any outcomes that we have or any predictive models that we build, if um, you know, it's ethically proper for us to provide those predictions to, to the police department or whoever else, because it might further, um, it, might, it, might, it might further perpetuate um, whatever cycle of discrimination or stereotypes that existed in the data set that we were using. So this kind of goes back to um, me talking about how it's hard to find good data. And even when it comes to a data set that the city of Chicago has provided us, um, even that data set has biases and stereotypes that are built in that makes it difficult sometimes ethically uh, or even in terms of machine learning to uh, implement some models and, and make some predictions um, utilizing that data. So, uh, you know, it's difficult sometimes, but, you know, if, if you're tasked to, to do something, you try to make the best of it and try to, you know, always have an asterisk with your, with your results and inform your public or whoever you're demoing it to that, you know, this could be a possibility. There could be some inherent bias in this data set. Um, so, yeah. And say, um, you know, learn by doing. Uh, I think a lot of people like to watch videos or, you know, read books. And those are important. It's important to utilize those tools. But at the end of the day, it comes down to just doing it, trying to watch a video and then implement it yourself. A lot of times it's a lot easier to, to view these videos than it is to actually implement them um, in your own in, you know, IDE. Um, so that's important. Uh, sometimes you know, we don't have time, you know, we have a part-time job, whatever it might be. And in that case, you know, it means taking a class uh, you know, or getting a certificate or, or whatever it takes. I mean, one, one thing that I, that I will say that might help alleviate anyone who feels like they might be behind in the machine learning space, whatever it might be, is that, you know, the field is always changing. It's such a new field. Um, I definitely don't know everything there is to know about machine learning. Um, you know, I'm still learning things on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, uh, you know, you, if you were to go and take classes um, in AI or machine learning or whatever it might be, you know, it, it probably has changed since the time that I've taken those classes. Um, and it might be introducing new topics that I'm not familiar with. So um, even though you might be behind, uh, or you might feel like you're behind, uh, taking these classes, um, you know, could put you ahead of some of your future colleagues. Um, so that might be kind of looking at the glass half full. Um, but in addition to taking these classes, I mean, I guess some of the classes that I think are, I think I mentioned some of these in the past, but I think some of that might be important are algorithms, database, data structures, whichever language, you know, C++, Python, it doesn't matter. Um, a Python or, or R class is also really important. Um, and like I mentioned before, you know, if you are interested in learning what goes on underneath the hood in machine learning, an advanced machine learning class or um, getting a master's in machine learning, that's usually when you'll start going through uh, the libraries, the actual libraries where we're pulling from in order to implement these, these models. 
um, and you start to fine tune them uh, and, you know, basically implement them in a more effective way. Um, and yeah, you know, discrete math, probability theory, linear algebra, you know, there's not, you, you can't know enough math really when it comes to uh, machine learning. So yeah, I think, uh, and then, you know, um, solving a problem. I see sometimes we go to, you know, I personally have gone to some schools to recruit um, for a cloud computing role here. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed sometimes in how, you know, they'll do some sort of like clustering for random numbers. Right. And I mean, that's theoretically interesting, but I would want to see clustering for, I don't know, something practical, something that's real world. So um, if you are playing with a Kaggle data set, you know, getting, getting experience in, you know, doing clustering for a real world problem and generating some, some, some insights is uh, invaluable. And at least from my end, if I was interviewing that person, I would be more impressed and more interested um, to have them come work here or something like that. So I think that's really important. Typically, say the companies that have the most data would be the most interesting, like Walmart, I think would be incredibly interesting because they have so much data. Uh, and I know specifically, I read a story where there was a hurricane that was about to hit one of their uh, stores. I forget. I think it was in Florida. And uh, the CIO at the time uh, tasked some of the engineers uh, in Walmart to figure out how they should stock this, this store that's about to be hit by a hurricane. Um, and, you know, what's obvious is never interesting, right? You know, stocking it with water and food, you know, that's not very helpful or interesting. We already know that. What's the weird thing um, that I don't know that I should stock up, stock up on? And, um, you know, after running God knows how many years of uh, sales history, uh, they found out that they needed to have more beer and more Pop-Tarts. So, you know, I would have never guessed, and I think many of us would not have guessed, uh, you know, that that would be the result. But um, because they had so much data, they, they were able to find these nuances, these very specific patterns that help them potentially earn a lot more money, generate a lot more revenue, um, and basically gave people what they, what they craved, what they felt they needed during, during a time of crisis. So, um, so yeah, so uh, Walmart, you know, Google, Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, you know, anybody that has a lot of data. I personally really enjoy Oracle where I am right now because I'm not working with just uh, sales history or I'm not working with, you know, social networking data or driving data, whatever it might be, you know, we get clients from a whole variety of industries. And so I get the opportunity to play with many different data sets. Um, so that's always interesting for me is just learning about different use cases um, and being able to implement uh, models for different issues. So, but yeah, typically just companies with big data, I think is probably a pretty good idea if you're going into the machine learning space.